In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the cam position sensors, front and rear, on this Dodge Grand Caravan. Let's get started. Remove your engine cover, if your vehicle has one. Just pull straight up on it. Now we can continue with our job. Pull that little red locking tab backwards to unlock the connector. Just like that. Now you can press down on that, pull the connector right out. And now with this unplugged, let's pop this retainer out of the intake. Set that aside. Might as well follow this harness right over here. Got another retainer, pop that off on the throttle body. Just like this. Unplug the throttle body connector. There we go. One last connector over here. Unplug this. Now you can set the whole harness aside out of the way of the intake. Take this hose off. Just slide it off the air box. Now you can flip it up. Be careful because it is hard plastic. You don't want to break it. Follow it over on this side and just pop it off of here. I'm going to take this air intake duct out of the way. It's got two clamps. Both are eight millimeter headed screws. Loosen these up. There's another one on the air box side. With those off, you should be able to wiggle this right off. Sometimes they get stuck from being here for so long. The plastic gets stuck to the rubber. There we go. Pull this aside. To get this off, it's just sitting on some rubber grommets. So pull really hard upwards, it'll pop out. And then you should be able to just slide it out of place. Once it's off the back and off the throttle body, pull backwards. That'll unlodge it off the front. Then you can take this out. Let's take this hose off of here. Set that aside. Pull this hose off of the intake. This is for the uh, rear valve cover, PCV. Uh, valve, and then there's another one right here. This is also a vacuum hose. Be gentle if you have to use anything to pry these off. You don't want to break anything. Just slowly push them off. There we go. At the front of the engine here where the manifold bolts onto these two brackets, it's supposed to have two 10 millimeter sized nuts. Well, mine are missing. I will put them back when the time comes to reinstall everything, but right now I see brackets that are slightly bent and two missing mounting nuts. So if yours are still there, which they should be, remove them. I'm going to address the situation once the manifold is off of here. On the back side of the manifold where the throttle body is, you'll notice a similar bracket set up here with two 10 millimeter nuts. These are here. We're going to have to pull this bracket off to do that. I'm going to take the retainer for this wire off. There's also another one right down here, which exposes its main anchor point. I'm going to take the two 10 millimeters off. And now let's take off that 13 millimeter down there. Whip that out, you should be able to pull the bracket off. Looks like there's one more wire attached to it. Pull that out. Now you can remove the bracket. Now there are seven eight millimeter headed bolts that hold this intake, the upper intake, onto the lower. I'm gonna work my way from the outer bolts to the inner bolts, just breaking them free. And then once they're broken free, I will remove them the rest of the way. These bolts will not come out completely. They will stay in the intake. Now grab the intake, pull it straight up, set it aside. Now I'm gonna cover these ports with a uh, cloth. That way nothing can fall in there. You can use anything else such as tape or shove some rags down there, but just cover it so debris can't make its way down. Now take this foam off. Now pop this connector or the, the red lock for the connector backwards, press it down, unplug the harness, 
take a T30 Torx bit and remove this bolt. The bolt will not come out, but at this point you can feel that it's loose. So pull up on the sensor. There we go. Very carefully clean this. You don't want debris falling inside the engine. Take your new sensor, slide it down. There we go. Just has to get past that notch. Line up the bolt hole down there. There we go, that falls right into place. We'll bottom this out. It does have an O-ring on the bolt, so when you tighten it, don't completely crush it. Just make it nice and snug. That's bottomed out right there. Just gonna give it a little extra and that's it. Plug the sensor back in, make sure that connector clicks, and of course lock it down. The rear one has the same exact procedure, it's just, well, in the rear. Press down on that tab, pull back on the connector, set it aside like that. T30 Torx bolt, break it free, and we'll remove it. There we go. Take your new one, slide it down, line up the bolt hole. Snug it up. Once it gets bottomed out, just a little extra. Plug it back in. There you go. Now before we set the upper intake back on, you want to make sure you check these gaskets and if they are still pliable, soft, and they're not flat, so these are raised up a little bit, they're good to go, you can reuse them. If they are stiff or flat completely with the lower intake, you're going to want to replace them so that it can seal up properly. Next, put this foam piece on. Mine is in okay condition, it's not great. If yours is completely falling apart, you're better off removing it rather than it falling apart underneath the intake here. But if it's reusable, go ahead and reuse it. Now as you put the upper intake in, make sure it lines up with these two brackets here. So I'm gonna bring it in, line those two up, and press it backwards like that. And then, as long as the brackets are still lined up like they were before, when you put this down, all the bolts here should line up into their uh, bolt holes. So before I bolt on any brackets, it is important to actually bolt it to the lower intake first so that this is sealed up, then you secure everything around it. Now let's tighten these up. I'm just going to snug them at first, get the bolts nice and close, but I will follow the appropriate sequence for this. You'll see it on the screen. Eighty-nine inch-pounds is the torque for this. That converts to 7.4 foot-pounds. We'll follow the same exact sequence. Okay, let's go around one more time. All right, that's torqued. Now let's get this rear bracket in. Not only do you have to line it up with the studs, but before I put it down all the way in, it'll be easier for me to re-secure this harness onto it right now, just like that. Now I'll line it up with these and automatically it should pretty much line up with the mounting bolt or mounting hole for this stud at the bottom. There was only one. Okay, I'm gonna thread that by hand until I get it close and then we'll snug that up. 
The torque for this is 177 inch pounds. That converts to 14.8 foot pounds. Let's uh, make sure it's nice and tight here so I can hold that intake manifold on the bracket properly. Make sure everything is still lined up before you torque this. That's it right there. Now let's put these mounting nuts on. Now with your 10 millimeter, snug them up. These don't need to be very tight. They just need to be snug. You don't want to break the studs or strip the threads. Now let's do the two front ones. And now let's get the two front mounting nuts on. These were the ones that I was missing before removing this, but you want to make sure you re-secure them so that the intake is properly secured to the engine. Same with these, just make them nice and snug after they bottom out about an eighth of a turn. Resecure the upper radiator hose to the intake. Resecure your wiring harness onto that stud. There was another retainer over there. This also gets clipped into the PCV hose. And then might as well plug in the PCV hose while, while we're at it. Try not to bend this, this part too much because it is hard plastic, so you can break it. But make sure that this is seated all the way, or at least most of the way. You can see where the fitting ends. Resecure this over here, and might as well plug this in while we're at it. Make sure that clicks. This did have a lock, so make sure you lock that down. Put this hose back on the intake. Resecure this over here, and then another attachment point there, but make sure the PCV hose goes over, or the, uh, the vacuum hose. Secure that, and plug the throttle body back in. Make sure that clicks. Let's put this piece back on. When you put it on, make sure it fully seats on that throttle body so you don't have any air leaks. It also has two little uh, dowels on the back that it has to line up with, as well as on the intake here. Press that down. Once you press it down, you should not be able to easily pull it back off. That's how you know it's seated. Plug this in. Take your air intake duct, place it on the intake side. Make sure it's bottomed out completely. It has a little notch on the top that has to line up over here. And same on the air filter housing. Once it's perfectly seated, go ahead and snug up these bolts. Once it's fully seated, snug up these clamps. For these, you don't have to tighten them a lot. Once they bottom out and get snug, stop right there because if you over tighten them, it'll actually strip the little screw in there and then you'll have to replace the clamp. Okay, that's it right there. Let's tighten up this one over here. Now get this PCV hose resecured on the valve cover, the front valve cover here. And then this one runs over all the way to the air box. Press both of these ends on all the way. Now take your engine cover, line it back up, snap it down. Now with everything back together, turn the engine on, take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.